Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Division video. And in today's video, I want to bring you guys four very useful tips for using world tiers to both help you farm and obtain useful items. By now, you guys should be very familiar with the system. In 1.4, they added world tiers, which is a system that globally controls the difficulty across all activities. It also affects the loot that you get. So if you guys are endgame, your gear score 229, then you're going to be spending 99.9% .9 of your time in world tier 4. Of course, if you guys have made new characters and you're playing through then you'll hit the different tiers as you progress with your gear score. But as an endgame player, there is actually value in dropping down world tiers from time to time. Hence the reason for this video. So if you do enjoy this, do find it helpful, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, but let's get started. So first up in at number four, this is a great way to obtain weapon mods and gear mods, whether that be performance or just like stamina attribute ones. Basically, if you go to a vendor, we're going to go to the special equipment vendor for demonstration purposes. If you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you can see here that there are two mods. Let's just pick this one here, this prototype performance mod, as an example. You'll see that it has a plus 7% support station duration skill attribute. Now, let's say for argument's sake that you are running a build and you're using the support station. Then it's going to be in your interest to look for performance gear mods that benefit those skills. That goes without saying. However, given that 1.4 has added loads of new stuff, loads of higher gear score weapons, loads more gear options, you're probably spending a lot of your time and effort focusing on maybe new builds, new weapons, and it's safe to assume that mods, gear mods and weapon mods, are probably slightly lower down your priority. That does not mean to say they are not important, because on the contrary, they are very, very important. But understandably, if you're working out what to spend your money on, then weapons and gear probably go first, mods will go second. Now in this situation, this provides us a plus 7% support station duration, and this is an item level 33 mod. However, if you go back to your map, and you go and change your world tier down to world tier 1, and you then scroll down to the bottom, this time it's an advanced performance mod, this is the level 30 version, but you will notice it still has plus 7% support station duration, and this only sets you back 56 Phoenix credits, which is considerably cheaper than the previous option. Now, not all mods will be like this. You won't always have a like-for-like -like stat distribution, but in this case, there is absolutely no reason to buy the level 33 version because you're basically just throwing away your Phoenix credits. Remember that item level as an actual number, like a physical number, doesn't actually affect your stats. It just means that with higher item level, you typically have higher stat potential. So in this respect, there's absolutely no difference between the level 30 version and the level 33 version. However, another example of this could be this T2 micro red dot site. We are now back in world tier four, this sets you back 627 Phoenix credits, and this carries headshot damage, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. Now, for the purposes of this, let's just focus on headshot damage, plus 5.5%. Now, headshot damage is, of course, a very good skill bonus to go after. It's really useful, so definitely, you know, seek out things like this. But, World Tier 4, 600 Phoenix credits, 5.5% headshot damage. However, if we then jump back to World Tier 1, you'll see, again, considerably cheaper, 72 Phoenix credits, and this gives you plus 5% headshot damage. Now yes, admittedly, the values are lower, and if you're an endgame player looking to finely tune and min-max, you are obviously going to be looking for the highest percentages. But, in the situation that I described earlier, if you are prioritizing spending your money on gear and weapons, then you are much better off buying a cheaper mod that will still give you 5% headshot damage than not buying it at all, because of course you haven't got the money, and then in turn just not having that bonus whatsoever. So, in this respect, Sensible use of world tiers to buy mods, at least early on, to kind of like bolster your weapons, means that you can get some really good skill attributes pretty cheaply, which will 100% tide you over until you get to the later point, where you have Phoenix credits to burn through and you can start replacing those mods. Then, in at number three, an easy way to obtain crafting materials. If you are maybe playing on a new platform, maybe you made a new character, whatever it is, I, for example, am on PC, so all my stuff that I had on Xbox is gone, so I, for one, am definitely always in search of crafting materials but again one of the easiest ways to get crafting materials is to dismantle items and if you're generally playing the game you're going through underground dark zone you can dismantle things then it's not really hard to come by but there are times where you might say be crafting things and you just need them there and then so one of the easiest things to do is to buy items and dismantle them of course if you go to say world tier 4 and you go and buy say this officer's m9a1 for example it's going to set you back 341,000 credits but again if we then go and jump over to the world tier option drop down to world tier 1 the same weapon is still going to be available for considerably fewer credits, but because it's still a purple item, it's still going to dismantle into the exact same option. So in this case, we buy one of these weapons, we go down to the sidearms, we then dismantle this, and you'll of course see because it's a purple item, it turns into two blue weapon parts, which would have happened if we had bought the expensive version, 
but we're just doing this for cheaper. So if you're looking for a way to get cheap materials really quickly and say you don't necessarily have the time to go out and farm and dismantle what you get, then this is a very good option. Then in at number two, I actually spoke about this in my recent vendor reset video, but in case you guys don't necessarily check that, then I wanted to highlight this because this is super important. For those of you guys that use alpha bridge builds, then you'll know the importance of having two weapons of the same category with different talents on, and ideally aiming to unlock as many of those as possible. If you can have a primary weapon with six talents, you're doing very well. And the alpha bridge build is especially strong in 1.4. It is one of the fan favorite builds. It's very, very good. I have one I use for PvE when I'm soloing content. So it goes without saying, if you have an alpha bridge build, you're going to be interested in this. Now, the reason World Tier is useful is because I spoke about this way back when Alpha Bridge was first introduced, but if you're going to have two weapons, there is absolutely no need, and realistically you shouldn't, have two 229 weapons. The reason for that is because higher gear score weapons have higher unlock requirements, and therefore the chances of hitting all the requirements for two 229 weapons, each with three different talents, are very, very slim. However, if you have one 229 weapon as your primary, and one 163 or 182 weapon as your secondary, the chance of hitting those six are actually a hell of a lot more likely. So if we then jump over to the special equipment vendor and take a look at this tactical Vector 45 ACP, you'll see it has Brutal, Fierce and Adept. They are some pretty nice skills, however in 1.4 the Vector is not a great weapon. So you wouldn't want to use it as your primary, but you do want those skills. And you can see here they've all got pretty steep requirements, 3800 in, you know, most of those talents. But again, if we then jump back and go down to the world tier system, Drop down to World Tier 1. You could go to World Tier 2 if you don't want to go so low, but realistically speaking, you know, there's not a lot in it. And you then scroll down and look at the same weapon. You can see that obviously it's cheaper, but also the requirements are much lower. 2,200, which is something that I'm pretty sure everyone can hit without even trying. So yes, the percentage bonuses are going to be a little bit lower, you know, 12% headshot damage on a 163. But again, if you're using Alpha Bridge, you're much better to get six talents on your primary weapon with slightly lower stat bonuses than to just only be able to hit three and then in turn waste the build. So once again, sensible use of world tier to change the gear score of items you buy is extremely useful for alpha bridge players. And then finally in at number one, an easy way to get Phoenix credits. And that is if you go to Clear Sky, which is, let's be honest, one of the easiest, shortest incursions, and you then go and set yourself on world tier one or world tier two. I actually did two the other day because of course I was playing with a, a group, but if you complete this incursion you get 100 phoenix credits just simply by completing it now on world tier one or two you can blitz through this in about five minutes now i was playing with three people the other day so it's a little bit slower we did it in about seven minutes but if you have a team of four that are relatively well geared you don't even have to be super geared just relatively well geared you can blitz through this on a low world tier in about five minutes now five minutes for 100 phoenix credits is extremely good if you then multiply that into an hour, that is about 1,200 Phoenix credits, give or take, given that you might have a little bit of downtime in between. But that is about 1,200 Phoenix credits in the space of an hour. And given that the new cap is 2,000, then that is a good chunk to get. Now, especially if you're going through buying items, recalibrating a lot, all that stuff, which is something I'm sure a lot of you guys are doing in 1.4, then you're probably always going to be in need of Phoenix credits. So being able to get an easy 100 that quickly is definitely going to be useful. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Those were just four tips for using World Tiers to both farm and obtain useful items. Definitely do consider using these because if you're looking to try and improve your build, then this will definitely help you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you did, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below. Let me know how you guys have been getting on in 1.4. And take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.